from Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. It's the New York Mets against the Cincinnati Reds. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Verizon. The most awarded network is now the best streaming network. By Empire City Casino, current jackpot now over $1 million. You could be the next big winner. By Toyota, visit your local Toyota dealer or buyatoyota.com today. Toyota, let's go places. And by the State Farm agent of the game, Pat Cauley of Glendale, New York. Contact Pat at patcauley.com. On the Ohio River, we overlook the Queen City of Cincinnati. Of course, this great city is steeped in baseball tradition, carrying all the way back to the beginning of the National League and all the way through the big red machine, Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, among the many Reds legends that played here in Cincinnati. Alongside Keith Hernandez, I'm Wayne Randazzo in for Gary Cohen, who has the series off. And Keith, it was an 0-6 homestand for the Mets. Didn't score a lot of runs, didn't hit many home runs. And the Mets set records as far as franchise records in home runs the last couple of seasons. Only 29 so far this year. Do they need the long ball to score runs? Well, I think eventually that this club will gel and start clicking offensively. But this club does not have a lot of D. Gordons, Altuves, or Ichiros in the lineup speed and, and average hitters. They have a lot of 250, 260 power hitters. They led the, they tied the league with Milwaukee last year in home runs in the National League. They are th right now uh, 13th, ranked 13th in the league, have only hit 27 home runs so far this season. So they need to pick it up offensively. The big four have got to pick it up. They, they got to rely on Conforto, uh, Cabrera, who's been holding up uh, uh, nicely. Uh, Jay Bruce has not gotten hot. Those guys need to pick it up. And they'll have to do it tonight for a pitcher making his major league debut. Jacob DeGrom on the disabled list, not starting tonight. So it's P.J. Conlon, the young left-hander, that comes all the way from the Falls Road of Belfast, Northern Ireland. Well, he flew out of Salt Lake City yesterday, and his flight was delayed, had to overnight in Chicago. He did not get here till 11.30 in the morning. This will be his debut here. He's had a tough run in AAA, an ERA over six. But this is a start that the Mets needed to plug the gap here, and uh, we'll see how he does tonight. Now, P.J. Conlin up against Homer Bailey, the veteran right-hander for the Cincinnati Reds. He's had a tough start to the season, Keith. He's made seven starts. The Reds have lost them all. Well, it's a kind of a strange career for Bailey, a, a career ridden with arm surgery, Tommy John. He's missed a lot of time. Uh, sub 500 pitcher but he's thrown two no hitters so he's capable he has that kind of stuff it's been a tough start for him but then again this red team is 8 and 26 not too many people are playing well and a welcome back to Cincinnati for a couple of ex Reds Todd Frazier plays his first game as a visitor at Great American Ballpark tonight it's the Mets and Reds when we come back.
Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, dedicated to advancing cancer research, treatment, and care. More science, less fear. By Spectrum. Hey, Mets fans, get the best TV, internet, and voice service today at Spectrum.com. And by Fidelis Care, here today, here tomorrow, here to stay. The more runs the Mets score, the more you save. For every run the Mets score against the Reds and Phillies during this road trip, you'll save $1 on select tickets to the upcoming homestand, May 15th through the 23rd. For more information, visit Mets.com slash runs. Our Coors Banquet Timeless Moment. Hall of Famer Johnny Bench, one of the greatest catchers of all time, and a guy who certainly revolutionized that position defensively, just like you, Keith, won 10 gold gloves. The best catcher, uh, there was a lot of good ones, so this is no criticism, uh, but this was the best catcher I ever laid my eyes on right here at Johnny Bench. He was so quick, so big, such a clutch hitter. Retired young. Went to Cooperstown in 1989. Johnny Bench played all his games right here in Cincinnati. We'll have the Mets and Reds coming up first pitch right around the corner. Yesterday's game after only an inning because of his quad, but he got through all the tests today, so he's playing. Adrian Gonzalez, Keith batting sixth, has six career home runs against tonight's red starting pitcher, Homer Bailey. And there's the Toyota numbers for Homer. Came in, made his debut back in June of 2007. Two no hitters, three major surgeries, all in his elbow. And we are underway in Cincinnati as Michael Conforto takes ball one. This is a guy, Keith, talking about the offense getting going. They would love to see Conforto start to snap out of it. Five for his last 40. Goes the other way here, and it's deep toward the corner. That's Duvall back, and that ball is gone. Michael Conforto does snap out of it. He goes the opposite way on the game's second pitch, and the Mets get on the board right away. That'll get a smile on your face. 
and using the opposite field. Let's hope that that's a sign of coming around. That's a little sinker, a little, actually not even a sinker, had too much plate, but he didn't try to pull. And this ballpark here, the ball carries, so this is a good elixir maybe for this offense. Now Cespedes looks at a strike. Bailey has given up a lot of home runs already this season. That's nine total. He's given up at least two in each of his last three starts. And Michael Conforto to the opposite field. His first home run since his first game played this year, April 5th, against the Nationals. Not an overswing. We've, we've mentioned how he's been under the ball. And this is a ball that's down, so you've got to go down and kind of angle your swing. But the thing that's impressive here is that he waited on the pitch and he used the opposite field. Well, Mickey Calloway stopped short of saying before the game today that they need Conforto to turn around, that he's the secret to unlocking this offense. But if Conforto does start hitting, the Mets should be in much better shape. Now Cespedes ropes one to left. Duvall ranging and making the catch in the corner. Well, two balls hit hard. Duvall, not known for his defensive skills, makes this play. This is not a very good defensive squad. A weird thing about it is that it was last year, and a lot of these guys. Have carried over to this year as Jay Bruce steps in. Second time he's come here as a visitor, last time in September of 2016 with the Mets. A Tucker Barnhart behind the plate won the gold glove last year. Billy Hamilton's a perennial gold glove finalist, and Duvall's been a gold glove finalist a couple of times too. You get the sense here in Cincinnati for a team that's been trying to rebuild and go forward. They keep going backward. It just hasn't seemed to turn around. They've had a lot of people they traded and young players and just haven't panned out. Bailey struggling right here. Three and oh big shift on the right side of the infield. There's the new manager Jim Riggleman. He's he's bounced around in various organizations managed the Nationals. A four pitch walk to Jay Bruce and the Mets have a base runner. Jim Riggleman on his fifth team as a manager replaced Brian Price after the Reds three and 15 start. He's just one team shy of the all time record managing six different teams. Something to strive for Keith. Well who holds the record. I'd be curious to know that Do you know that off the top of your head? Jimmy Dykes. Oh the old uh, Philadelphia athletic. John McNamara. And Dick Williams. Okay. Hall of Famer and Dick Williams. And it's six different teams, all those guys. As Dribble Cabrera takes ball one. Bailey's missed with five out of the zone after giving up a couple of smokes to the first two hitters. And Cabrera chased. Home plate umpire tonight is Ron Culpa, a veteran. Jerry Mills, the crew chief at first. Gabe Morales and Ed Hickox round out the crew. Most consistent hitter in Cabrera for the Mets. He has been absolutely solid. A little bloop. This might fall in a tough spot for the Reds. Duvall can't get it. It's a foul ball. Oh boy, barely. Deval not a good runner out there doesn't cover a lot of Check ground surprised that he was a gold glove finalist. Just Boys. foul. Just foul is right. Adam Duval known more for his bat than his glove but. Hasn't had the bat working yet either as Jay Bruce. Gets to pal around with Joey Votto at first maybe Todd Frazier can too. longtime Reds teammates. Bruce and Votto were very close during Bruce's days here in Cincinnati. Part of the reason why he likes to wear 19 is for Joey. Cabrera whiffs on an off-speed pitch from Bailey, who has his first strikeout. 
take a look at the Jeep defense for the Cincinnati Reds as Barnhart the Gold Glove as well as Votto in 2011 Jeanette Peraza at shortstop the outfield Billy Hamilton is a good solid center fielder but the two corner outfield positions there's not a lot of uh, range out there what I've heard a lot of responsibility for Billy Hamilton to cover ground in the gaps especially in right field Jesse Winker particularly is of slow speed as Frazier got a nice hand from the fans here in Cincinnati today. A little presentation before the game as well for Frazier who had some good years with the Reds. 63 home runs hit in this ballpark that's still the sixth most of any player. And five so far as a met. This is a uh, band box here. It's a beautiful park. At the Ohio River over the right field line Kentucky the hills of Kentucky in the distant distance. So getting a lot of trouble over in Kentucky if you don't watch out. <laughs> in Kentucky. Yes I didn't know. I, I will tell you in commercial break. OK. It's three and zero oh on Frazier. This is a nice ballpark here in Cincinnati just having a hard time filling it with the team struggling the last handful of years. And of course when I played it was Riverfront Stadium the Coliseum type stadium. With Frazier green light on three and zero, oh. as Joey Votto waits near the bag puts away his former teammate and retires the side but the Mets get on the board Michael Conforto a leadoff homer and it's P.J. Conlin about to make his big league debut. Reds lineup stocked with Joey Votto in the middle batting third. Eugenio Suarez has gotten off to a good start in the fourth spot. Adam Duvall though has struggled for the Reds this year as they all will try to hit a left hander a soft talker, mixing speeds. It's P.J. Conlon and his Range Rover numbers that are not impressive in five starts in Las Vegas. The walks are OK. There, there's his dad. Family, excuse me, that is the uh, the Irish flag right there. And the first pitch of P.J. Conlin's career is a strike to Jesse Winker. Roughly 20 people have come here to support P.J. Conlin this evening. They are pumped as Exciting. they are back home in Ireland. Wonderful. See, he's got a deceptive motion, big shoulder lift, got a good change up. On the bus with him coming over to the ballpark today, which just me, him, and I, the only two guys on the bus. 
High fly ball off the bat of Winker. Conforto settles under it. And P.J. Collins retired the first man that he faces. And your Lexus Met defense. Lobotone behind the plate. Gonzalez always starts against the right handers and that is your solid infield on the left side of your screen there they're in there every day and this is your everyday outfield we got the strong arm of Cespedes boy has he had a great year so far in the field with the glove and the arm Cespedes. It's Jose Peraza slapping one foul the other way. Well this is a Reds team Wayne at the seventh. In batting average, 239 as a team, 13th in runs, very much 14th in home runs in this ballpark. Their numbers are very close to what the Mets' numbers are. There's your changeup. The only difference is the Reds have been hitting better lately. They started slow. The Mets, the opposite, got off to a very good start and have crept down of late. P.J. Conlon, maybe it was 29 in Vegas. He's number 60 now. Maybe got to update it. Maybe he's number 29 in their heart. Could be. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Ooh, a jam shot on Peraza who fouled it off. Conlon not a big swing and miss guy. He's got the change up. That's his bread and butter. He's got to deal with Joey Votto pretty soon. Votto had a big night last night. Four for five. Hit a home run. A double. Drove in I think four runs. Wasn't supposed to be a night game, but it turned out that way after the long rain delay and a long game on top of that. I think they had an hour and 15 or minute rain delay or more. Should be an easy out for the former Red, Jay Bruce. Two down. All right, so they got Winker and Peraza out. Now go get this guy. Well, one of the best hitters in the game, off to a very, very slow start, Votto, but starting to pick it up. You know, 405, 408 on base percentage, one of the always the leader in on base percentage, MVP. What a career. Votto only had one extra base hit in his first 21 games, and he homered in four straight. Good paint job there by Conlin on the outside corner. Votto was the MVP runner up last year. Giancarlo Stanton beat him, but could have easily made a case for Votto. That was his sixth on base title. Yes, he's very disciplined, good eye at the plate. Been criticized over the years here of walking too much. A guy that really needs to swing the bat against a pretty anemic. Uh, a lineup over the years, not a lot of help. Pretty much what happened with Ted Williams in Boston. They always just complain about Ted Williams taking the walk when he needed to swing the bat. Ted would not swing at that bad pitch. Votto laid on the fastball, 87 from Conlon, but that's that deception, Keith, that we talked about. Votto right now hitting 189 against left handers, which is very out of character for him. 34 years of age now. He's beyond his prime, but this guy keeps himself in great shape. Very dedicated. Votto's a career 297 hitter against lefties. Conlon trying to put him away with the breaking ball, but now it's a full count. He won't get Votto to chase very often. Also a guy that chokes up on the bat around two inches. And there's ball four. Votto makes you work every time. A two out walk. He's on base again to bring up Suarez. I mean, if you're pitching against this Reds club, and you know, Suarez is a dangerous hitter. But are you going to let Joey Votto beat you? In that case, here it's two outs, and so that's not the situation. But you've got. Not a whole lot of hitting in this lineup and Votto is the one guy I think that you're going to look at coming in and say this guy is not going to beat me. He's on first after a two out pass. Infield shifting for Suarez. Playing him to pull as he takes ball one. 26 home runs last year 21 in 16. He's a power hitter run a lifetime 260 hitter. And there's, there's the shift. 
They gave Suarez a big fat contract after that too, seven year deal. Conlin, really the first pitch probably should have been a strike and that one the opposite, but it evened out. For the native of Belfast, just the second major leaguer from Belfast, the first Henry McElveen, early 20th century. Suarez off the end of his bat. Jay Bruce settles under, and P.J. Conlin works a scoreless bottom of the first. They are dancing in the streets on the Falls Road in Belfast. And here in Cincinnati, too, the Mets lead 1-0. Mets have a lead. Adrian Gonzalez takes a strike against a guy that he has crushed in his career. Gonzalez has six home runs lifetime against Homer Bailey. Anyone in your career, Keith, that you remember that you just creamed? Uh, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> Anybody in particular that? Made you salivate upon seeing at the well at the plate. Uh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. <laughs> there was a, there was a more there was there there was um, more. Let's just say there was more that I liked to hit off than there was that I didn't like to hit off of, and there was plenty of those I did not like to hit off of. You're being very nice to these former pitchers that you battered around. Well, it's on the record. You can go, you know. So just, we're just left to our F own research. Facts at this don't point. lie. Well, Adrian Gonzalez, the facts don't lie about him against Homer Bailey. 11 for 25, six home runs. Really, the best game Gonzalez ever had in his career was here in Cincinnati. Last time he played here, he had a three homer, eight RBI game. First home run was off of. Number 34 for the Reds. Who wears 34, by the way, because he's from Texas and he idolized Nolan Ryan. From LaGrange, Texas. And there's another hit for Adrian Gonzalez off of Homer Bailey. Just keeps going no matter what, no matter where. Gonzalez crushes Bailey. And a base hit to start the second. Wants the ball up and away and look at this he comes on top right down Broadway and down in the strike zone. I'm telling you pitchers today should start throwing the ball upstairs and back 
when I was a kid growing up against right hand hitters or high ball hitters a lot of them that was a no no that was a mistake. Well, that's what Mickey Calloway was saying and Noah Syndergaard to some degree too yesterday. I saw that in Noah's uh, tweet uh, that he needs to throw more and I, I was glad to see that I'm glad he recognized that. I actually asked Noah early in the season I think it was before opening day if because of how hitters are adjusting to the low ball if he should try to go upstairs more and he said at that time that he wouldn't but now after maybe a bit of a sluggish start for Syndergaard he's changed his tune as we see Tucker Barnhart out to the mound with Bailey and Barnhart burning a mound visit early on. Uh, maybe he saw a, a different point of release that was a breaking ball he just something different coming out of Bailey trying to throw inside just missing. This is a guy that's three surgeries Tommy John bone chips he had shoulder surgery in the minor leagues early I'm not shoulder surgery but shoulder problems and he's been a a walking mash unit. Yeah, he's nowhere near the pitcher he was for a short time there early in this decade as Lobatone was out in front. We talked earlier about the two no hitters. Good sinking change up right there through one against the Pirates in 2012 and in the Giants in 2013. Lobato didn't chase this one. It's three and two. So that just tells you, Wayne, that he does have the stuff to do that, but I think that the injuries have really marred his career. This is Bailey's 200th career start. He's 66 and 67. Last time he was under 500 was when he was 19 and 20. Lobatone sends one toward the corner and extra bases for the Mets catcher. Gonzalez rumbles toward third. Winker gets it in. They'll hold Gonzalez. Lobatone has a double and the Mets have runners on second and third with nobody out. Tries to come in bleeds out a little bit but again down in the strike zone. And Gonzalez at his age is not going to score on that double but it sets up a big inning at second and third. And the Mets are doing what most of the National League has been doing to this Reds pitching staff last in ERA 5.27. Oh man I wouldn't want to play 162 games in the field with that. Here's P.J. Conlin his first major league at bat he takes a strike looking for his First run batted in. Conlon, not a bad hitter in the minors. Six for 24. Can have field. a little league day here if he yeah. gets a base hit. Like Steven Matz in his debut. Bad swing there by Conlon. Remember, Matz against the Reds at City Field had that four RBI day in his first big league start. Flag of Ireland waving proudly here tonight in Cincinnati. Ooh. That's a wild pitch. It bounces up, and Gonzalez didn't try to score. Wow. Okay. That's a bit of a surprise. That is certainly an erring on the side of caution. I mean, this ball gets by him and it hits. I mean, you can't anticipate how it's going to carry him, but usually go. I mean, he had no intention whatsoever. I know that not a lot of foul territory here. I don't know if he anticipated a bounce back, but that's padding behind home plate. The bricks are on the sides of the home plate area, not directly behind home plate, so nothing really to bounce off of to get back to Barnhart. Conlon rolls one back to Bailey who fakes a throw and retires the batter instead. So Gonzalez stationed at third maybe should have scored on that pitch that got away from Barnhart but now it's up to Ahmed Rosario and then Conforto if he can't do it. See the Reds pitching staff this is where it's been the last 
handful of years. 527 ERA. That's last in the majors. 265 opponents batting average. 2016, they allowed the most home runs in history and then almost broke their own record last year. And there's that up and in fastball that Rosario has been chasing. We had that graphic up on Rosario how he takes a lot of pitches under the National League average on balls over the plate and uh, and swings more at down and away and up and in. Rosario it's this one in the air to center Hamilton backs up deep enough to score the run you'd figure. Gonzalez will tag from third he'll come home Lobatone goes to third. So the Gonzalez run comes home. Rosario gets the sack fly and the Mets lead by two. Now Michael Conforto will back Gonzalez not quite out of the woods yet because Lobatone really should have been a third already had Gonzalez scored on that wild pitch. Here's Conforto who socked an opposite field home run his first time. Both of his home runs now this year have been to left field. Now they're going to come in. 95 mile an hour fastball from Bailey to make it 0 1. Catcher setup in, but the ball was bled outside. I'm just focused on Conforto getting on top of the baseball. He's been under so much. Took a pitch there. We've seen him take pitches in the strike zone too. You mentioned Rosario doing it. Seems like Conforto's been stuck in between sometimes as well. Well, I think that he's, you know, this game will shake you to your to your foundation. And he's had a tough run that coming in that five five for forty. It gets your attention. You know, that's coming to the ballpark. You figure, you know, four at bats a game. Forty at bats. That's coming to the ballpark. 10 games for 10 days in a row and really not feeling good at the plate. It's not fun. It's this one right into where Jose Peraza was playing him. And Conforto's retired to end the inning. Mets do get one. They leave Lobatone at third. And they pad a run on for P.J. Conlon.
Sunday at City Field when the Mets take on the Diamondbacks at 1.10 p.m. The first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a Mets plastic bat as part of MLB Play Ball Weekend. Plus, all kids 12 and under can run the bases postgame in the Mr. Met Dash presented by Northwell Health. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash tickets. Wayne, those days of the wooden bat days, they're long gone. They'll never, they'll never be back again. Well, <laughs> Plastic and metal. I think that uh, another fly ball out potentially. Michael Conforto puts it away and Scooter Jeanette is retired. Four outs for P.J. Conlon. They've all been in the air so far. All in the air and this is the ballpark where you don't want to throw fly balls. 325 down the right field line. 328 down the left field line. Right center really got my attention. 370. Now remember folks in that gap. In right center field, 368 are the dimensions of Wrigley Field. So 370 is only two more feet. Oh gosh, give me a pitch I can pull. <laughs> Adam Duvall takes ball one, and down the line it's a lot shorter than Wrigley Field. 325. Yes, yes it is, and we got that wind that blows really from right field. It it actually run the wind blows from the west normally in the summer here. Which is parallel to the Ohio River right over the center or the right field fence. There's a lot of open space out there beyond right field that got that big scoreboard in left some buildings in left field but in right it's just wide open. Another pop up this time on the infield. Adrian Gonzalez to retire Duvall. Deceptive motion that Conlon has gets down low and watch him lift the shoulder. The front shoulder. So that's a he's a very deceptive he hides the ball. You don't have have to be a hard thrower. Particularly if you're a left hander to have success. Well, Conlon says he never was a hard thrower and he kind of got a head start on learning how to pitch because this is the way he's always been. That makes perfect sense. Barnhart had to skip. To get out of the way of that one Barnhart five for eleven against lefties so far this year he's a switch hitter. Another thing Mickey Callaway said about Conlon is that he pitches inside a lot. You know, the Mets are trying to get Mats to do that more. Wheeler. But Conlon just does it. There's your change up. I think Mats throws inside more than enough, uh, almost too much to a fault. But I think the philosophy of this new regime here, Callaway. Dave Island is to pitch have their pitchers pitch inside. Went to the change up on three and one to go full with Barnhart. Pitcher Bailey on deck. Barnhart swings and tips in the Lobatones glove and P.J. Conlon has his first big league strikeout a one two three inning to go with it and Conlon looking good through two. Those Irish eyes are smiling, Wayne.
2015 season. He won the home run derby that year here in Cincinnati, and he's back and getting honored by the crowd here at Great American Ballpark before the game today. And he also got to be reunited with Teddy Kramer, who was once a bat boy here for the Reds at Great American Ballpark, still works on the game day staff. Teddy had his own bobblehead to give to Todd, too. Yes. Very nice what the Reds did for Todd. Yoana Cespedes starts the third, takes a strike from Homer Bailey. Cespedes came out of the game early yesterday, but okay to play today. It's this one by the third baseman, Suarez. And Yoana Cespedes takes two. A slide and a double to start the third. And just kind of took it three quarters around there. Remember, he strained that uh, hip yesterday, came out of the game. There was some question whether he would play tonight. And here he is running. Let's take a peek and see. He just he knows he's got an automatic double. And take your time. Got to put a little extra there, and I got to slide. Now far from the full out burst we saw yesterday when he went from first to third on Cabrera's hit. Ended up bothering his quad but he's in there tonight he's had two rockets so far. And now the batter Jay Bruce. I think it's important to note that Wayne that he hurt uh, the hip on a day game after a night game. So I asked Sandy uh, uh, Sandy. Mickey Callaway in the presser before the game, you know, this coming Wednesday is a day game. Would he consider giving him a day off? And then you have the off day the next day, you have 48 hours off. And he said they're very much thinking along those lines, and I think it's the proper thing to do. You've got to keep that man on second base, Mr. Cespedes, healthy. I remember it was the hip that was reported initially, but it was the quad that yeah. Cespedes said was. Affecting him yesterday and that's a lingering those muscle pulls are lingering injuries. You got to be real careful. And this is probably this the the same quad that affected him the last year. And uh, they don't go away. You can stretch all you want and do all the strengthening and stretching stretching's key. But still you've weakened the muscle by tearing the fibers. And they never go back really 100%. So they really need a lot of attention, a lot of stretching. Jay Bruce sits one high in the air. That's deep. Winkers back at the track. That ball is gone. A home run for Jay Bruce. It's been a while since his last homer, about two weeks. But Jay Bruce back in Cincinnati in a place where he's hit a lot of home runs and he has his third of the year to put the Mets up by four. Uh, yes sir keep that shoulder in hanging breaking ball. And you hit the ball here it's going to go especially in right field. So, well, Keith, you said the long ball would come here in Cincinnati. So far, three innings, two homers. I felt good about this club. I, I coming on this, starting this road trip, even after the windless homestand. I just, it's a veteran offensive team. They did not hit. They got shut out three times. Oh, a little chin music. They didn't hit. Got shut out three times in four days, four games. And I know that it wasn't going to affect the, this veteran lineup and coming here where you're facing this pitching staff which has been getting ripped most of the year and this ballpark perfect situation. Jay Bruce says the second most home runs ever hit in this place now 136 Joey Votto 144 just passed Bruce late last season. Todd Frazier sixth on that list he's right behind Ken Griffey Junior with 63 but it's Bruce adding one to his total. 
And now Homer Bailey in his last three starts has given up six home runs. He has a total of three strikeouts in that time. More home runs allowed than strikeouts. Cabrera the lone strikeout victim for Homer Bailey so far in this one. The Mets have four extra base hits two doubles two home runs. That's what their offense needed after averaging under two runs per game. Over the six game homestand. I feel it's kind of ironic that this club breaks out. Cabrera has been getting his hits but I feel he's been hot for so long. I, I sense him just pulling off a little bit lately. He's not running on all eight cylinders right now. He's having a little little bit of a lull out in front chasing something he hasn't done all season. This has been in the last three or four games. We take you back to 2013 Todd Frazier in a Reds uniform a home run to straightaway center field against the Marlins. Teddy was the bat boy that day. He requested to Todd that he hit a homer. Todd delivered and the celebration was on in the Reds dugout. Todd Frazier just an all around great guy. We've gotten to know Todd a little bit here over the last month or so a couple months. And he's been a joy to be around especially for the other players in the clubhouse Todd has already become a life of the party down there. What Frazier did in his time with Cincinnati. They brought him up in 2011. Well, this is what we talked about in the open as far as the club hitting home runs. You know, a lot of guys like Frazier are on this club, but 250, 260 hitters with, uh, with power, 20 plus home run power. Sandy Alderson believes in that theory, and he's said it. The team that out homers the other team wins of an, enor an enormous amount of some percentage I forget the percentage and he has built this team Wayne around that philosophy. This is a home run hitting team. I don't go by that philosophy but this is the way the team is constructed. Frazier it's this ball hard Duvall will dive and make the catch. What a play by Adam Duvall. Lunging out on a ball that was streaking away from him. And that's why Duvall's been a Gold Glove finalist the last couple of years. He robs Frazier. Terrific play right here. He's made two nice plays. This is an even better one than the one off of the bat of Cespedes in the first inning. That's the heck of a play. So Frazier denied his first hit as a visitor here in Cincinnati. Adrian Gonzalez looks at a strike. If you hear an unfamiliar voice, Keith, Gary's got the series off. So I'm Wayne Rantazzo, filling over from the radio side. And you sell yourself short. The fans know your voice. <laughs> well, they just don't hear Gary, and then they get, you know, they get all a little uh, anxiety ridden. Folks, Gary deserves a rest every now and again. <laughs> okay, he works hard. He has to work with the truck. Yeah. And that's that's a pill. And then you got Ron <laughs> and me, and that and that even that's more trouble. Yeah. And then he's got the Great Danes at home. You know, that's right. Of, that's right. I'm sure he's. Having a barrel of laughs right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is. I'm sure he misses you, though. Well, uh, 
You there's, think? Yeah, there's some longing, I feel oh, like. I think he's loving this four days off. <laughs> that's that's get, right, get with get the his, off day Thursday. Get his batteries recharged for Philadelphia. Yeah, Gary's no fool. He, he made sure he got four days and three games. <laughs> he didn't get the, the lovely media dining we had here in Cincinnati. Well, how he told us before the game that Marge Schott used to serve the food herself sometimes. Really? At a, I was never when she owned the team. I was I don't I, well, I don't believe I was in the booth. No you were probably playing still or maybe even after you were done playing when I forget she still had the team. I don't know what year she owned the club to be honest. She was I late forgot. 80s into the 90s. Oh, right, and she was around yeah. when I played yes. But uh, yeah she was she would first of all stand over to make sure that nobody got served too much. There was a certain amount of skyline chili that needed to be served per serving per oh. person. You ever had that. Chili? No. And then <laughs> and then. She would sometimes just cut in and do it herself. Owner of a major league baseball team with her dog, Shotzi. Mm. Gonzalez strokes one in the air. This one is long gone. Forget about it. Adrian Gonzalez has his seventh career home run against Homer Bailey. And the Mets offense has found its formula. Well, that gets the Met fans that are here fired up with their chant. But this is what it's got to do. You've got to beat up. There's the swing. He went out and got that ball out over the plate. Eight and 26 the Reds you've got to beat up on them. This was a nice scheduling for the Mets coming off the six straight losses. Adrian Gonzalez continues to appreciate whatever Homer Bailey is serving. He's serving up homers. With those numbers, seven home runs. Between active batters and pitchers, he ties Paul Goldschmidt for the most home runs off of an active pitcher. Goldschmidt has seven off of Tim Lincecum, who's kind of active. Back. Wayne, I got an important announcement. Yes. That home run went 412 feet. Wow. Exit velocity, or oh, excuse me, exit velo. Okay. 108 miles per hour. And most importantly, 23 degree launch angle. You know, that's the perfect launch angle. Did you know that? <laughs> Robotone, it's a bouncer foul. It really is. It yes. was an old newspaper article that was found recently from the 1880s. Right. And it said in there the perfect launch angle for a baseball two words back then was 23 degrees to hit it the furthest. Yes. So see Gonzalez but did that 412 feet later a home run. If you think about it 23 degrees is really kind of a it's not a fly ball it's a line drive. Yeah. So that's the ball you hit really squarely. So a lot of it is just I mean, you don't have to be Albert Einstein <laughs> or a nuclear physicist to figure it out. I think. It's, some people out there selling a whole lot of snake oil. <laughs> <laughs> Lobatone takes strike three. But the Mets have the bats rolling against Homer Bailey. They've hit three home runs tonight. Enjoy the chili here in Cincinnati. Five nothing. The Mets have the lead.
game live at home in the office or on the go with MLB.tv. Your subscription allows you to watch live baseball on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Excuse me, Wayne. Whoa. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't get there in time. Cincinnati baseball oh. goes back a long time, Keith. 1869. Yes. There they are. Look at those mustaches. Is that how you got yours? No, I was got mine from from uh, Richard Boone and Have Gun Will Travel. I don't know if you were old enough to remember that. I'm not. Paladin. Tell me more. Well, I know the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically a hired gun that went out and hunted down outlaws. Yeah, he had his mustache. He had a, he had a black voice. hair and a black mustache. Okay. One of my favorite. Uh, he wore a black outfit. Homer Bailey puts one on the ground for Ahmed Rosario. P.J. Conlon has retired seven of the eight Reds that he's faced. Well, good for P.J. Keep it up. I'd like to get six out of it. How about a big blowout? Get that bullpen a nice little off day too. Keep mowing them down. Well, we've seen some recent major league debuts go very well for starting pitchers. Just a week ago or so, the Pirates' Nick Kingham had a perfect game through six and two thirds in his debut. <laughs> Spectrum high speed pitch. Well, Homer Bailey's got the heat, but P.J. Collins, the one that's got the score in his favor, although Billy Hamilton hits one a long way. That's not his M.O., but Billy Hamilton has the Reds' first hit tonight, and it's a home run. Second home run of the year for Hamilton and both off left handers. <laughs> the other one was off the Cardinals Tyler Lyons. And Billy Hamilton known for his blazing speed. Got to run the bases pretty quickly on his own. Back to the top of the order and Jesse Winker takes a strike. Winker flied to center his first time. Winker's kind of the Reds version offensively at least of Brandon Nimmo. Worked his way onto the team former first round pick. Gets on base a lot doesn't have a ton of power. Not, not sure if he's as smiley as Brandon but. Down to Anita, scoop it, and two outs. Worst teams in Major League Baseball: the Reds and Orioles share that distinction. The White Sox are nine and twenty-three. Teams that are rebuilding, tanking—the word that nobody likes to oh, use. That's a terrible word, too. I know that Major League Baseball doesn't not like that word tossed around, but there are some El Stinko teams out there. <laughs> Jose Peraza takes ball one. And the commission wants to expand two more teams so we can, you know, get kind of push aside a little less interleague play. I can't imagine two more teams. Soft liner. Rosario leaps up to make the catch. And the side retired. P.J. Conlon gives up a hit for the first time in his career. Billy Hamilton with a home run brings the Reds a little closer.
Meanwhile, P.J. Collins only allowed one hit in his first three big league innings. At the plate for the second time, takes ball one from Homer Bailey. Conlon in there because Jacob DeGrom has been pushed back. He's supposed to come off the DL Sunday to pitch against the Phillies. The Mets just taking it easy with DeGrom. Safe before sorry. I, I knew he was going to skip a start. I mean, he hyperextended the elbow, was pitching elbow, and there's a one start is not going to kill. Conlin up the middle and it's by Peraza oh. into center field. Save the baseball for P.J. Conlin. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> well, a little salt and pepper too. First big league hit for P.J. Conlin. I know a couple of people in the stands who are very excited to see that standing by with Steve Gill. Yeah, I'm here with the parents, Patrick Conlon, Susan Conlon. I got a great view of that reaction right there, guys. And prior to doing this interview, I said, you know, we don't need to start it in the inning where he's in or where he's hitting. And you guys said, well, we don't care if he hits, only if he pitches. But you did seem pretty excited by that, Patrick. Yeah, I think the ones behind me were more excited than I was. You know, the, uh, he's always been a decent hitter, you know, and, uh, he, and he likes to hit. You know he likes it, but he likes to pitch because he gets to rest more, and then he gets uh, you know being on the field. So he likes to sit and rest more, more than he likes to play. Patrick, I know we said that you'd be doing most of the interview you're because talking, Mom talking, Susan is pretty talking. nervous. But just a couple innings in now, are you settling down at all, or are the nerves still as high as they were at the beginning? Nerves are still pretty as high as they were at the beginning. <laughs> it's hard. I don't watch him play, so it's hard. But I'm here. What was PJ like last night? Did you guys talk to him prior to this start? No, talked to him yesterday morning, right after it happened, and then left him alone. Yeah, we left him alone. He, he kind of has his own routine, you know, during the day before he pitches, so we just leave him alone. Patrick, what was the emotion like for you guys? Uh, this wasn't necessarily an expected time to have him come up to the the big league. So when you finally got that call, what was the emotion for you guys? Shocked, actually. I I got the call from a guy from the New York Times before PJ me. And said I'm, I'm getting called up. Um, I was shocked, and I I, I, was, I wasn't surprised. I thought he might get called up this year at some time, but it was really to get so soon. Your family it gets talked about so much from Ireland. Your parents are are from Scotland, Susan. We've got here Ahmed Rosario driving it out to deep center field. Looks like P.J. Conlon <laughs> might score his first run. <laughs> Not quite yet. He's at third base. Ahmed Rosario is in there with a double, with a stand-up double. But like I was saying, you, you hear the chanting behind. We've, we've got the the Irish, we've got the Scottish sides of the family. They had to come all the way out. What does it mean for them and and for you guys to have that heritage experiencing this? Well, it's 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 funny because everyone in Ireland and I started to follow baseball. You know, and no one knew the rules of the. Not all my cousins, and then and Susan's ones. Starting to follow baseball just because PJ, you know, and then he could bring it, you know, he could bring the game to Ireland and can, you know, can the kids are starting to play, but adults are starting to play. It's been a great experience. But one on in Ireland down. Yeah, well, thank you so much. We're having a little bit of microphone difficulty, but we got the point. Patrick, <laughs> Susan, thank you so much. Congratulations and enjoy the rest of the day. All right, Wayne, let's send it back up to you. Steve, thank you very much. Susan is Scottish, Patrick is Irish. A little consternation between the two sides sometimes, but everybody united today behind PJ Conlon, who has a base hit in this inning. Ahmed Rosario doubling off the wall to put Conlon at third, and now Danny Darwin on the mound trying to move Homer Bailey through this fourth inning. Danny Darwin was a very good pitcher for the Texas Rangers. Uh, came over to the Philadelphia Phillies late to the National League. Had good stuff competitor on the mound. That's Jackson Stevens warming up in the Reds bullpen just called up today. Mets threatening to score again. Here's Conforto who homered in the first. Conforto hitting his seventh career leadoff homer. Oh boy they're just handing it to Homer Bailey here. Mets have six extra base hits in this game. 
Only in the fourth inning. They only had 10 the entire six game homestand. Conforto, he is not done very well when he's been ahead in the count so far this year. He does not have a hit this season when the count is 2 and 0, 2 and 1, 3 and 0, or 3 and 1. And you would think. It would be the other way around obviously those are good pitches to hit. He's been under a lot of things as I've mentioned. Under this one Duvall with a chance to go chase it. He makes the catch. And no George Foster type play down the left field line here with Duvall firing it in. Conlon will stay at third. Now Cespedes will bat doubled and scored his last time. Also hit the ball hard in the first inning but Duvall ran it down toward the corner. We did see Cespedes on that double in the third. Not exactly flying around the bases taking it easy on that sore quad. Now a high drive to center Hamilton's back in front of the wall makes the catch Conlon tagging from third to score Rosario scoots up a base Cespedes at RBI and the Mets back up by five. See what did Scooter Jeanette do I mean it's just. Oh well just. Scooter Jeanette just got the cutoff the relay throw but you got a back runner in Rosario who was really busting on the back side and look at Conlon here first base hit first run getting a lot of support but Jeanette just got the ball in shallow center field and lobbed it into home plate and threw a short hop to the catcher it could have got by him Rosario could score that's just lazy. There's Scooter. Sorry, Scooter, but <laughs> got that one coming. Bruce with a chopper that Joey Votto handles. Racing to the bag. It's Votto who wins to retire the side. Mets get another run. It was scored by P.J. Conlin. His first major league hit. Smiles from mom and dad. And Steve Gelbs, too.
Jay Conlon. Major League debut has gone pretty well so far outside of a Billy Hamilton home run. Conlon walked Votto. He's got a hit. He's got a run scored. He's got a nice lead. He's about to get Joey Votto out. Cespedes retires Votto one away. This is preseason from Red Zoner Bob Castellini about what the 2018 season was supposed to look like for the Cincinnati Reds. Potential to be a contender. Well, they have a lot of the same players here except for Cozart. They let go, and uh, they're just not. They're not performing like they did last year. You can't make those kind of bold statements unless you've got players that have put two, three, four years back to back. It's just get a lot of one year flukes. Well, they lost 94 games last year and the year before, 98 in 2015. <laughs> but when you hear see when you hear play fans say that they want their team to rebuild. The Astros, the Cubs, the Royals, the Pirates, all the teams that did it right, did it well. This is the team where ownership says, well, we don't want to be that. Well, I'm a little concerned about Cincinnati not being able to be competitive financially because of the finances and the salaries. So if, what they got a hundred million in salary and they're paying 25 percent of it to their first baseman. Headed toward the gap. Cespedes is trying to cut it off, but he won't be able to. Hey, Eugenio Suarez. Devils to left center. And the Reds have their second hit against PJ Conlon. Base runner for the Reds. Here's Scooter Jeanette fly to center his first time. Now, Jeanette, here's what I don't understand, Keith. I'm not a big superstition guy, but Jeanette had 27 home runs last year, the year of his life, at four grand slams, at a four homer game. And all last year, he was number four. Why would you change your number after a season like that? And he switched it, he went down. He's down to three. Low expectation? I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't. Certainly wouldn't change the number, but obviously he's not a superstitious, not in the superstitious superstitious camp. I'll spit that out. I mean that's just throwing caution to the wind. You well, Jeanette just it was his first really big year. He played a few more than a few years in Milwaukee, four years in Milwaukee. Uh, a 283 hitter lifetime, but never for any power. The Brewers just let him go. The beginning of last year as Jeanette goes the other way. Cespedes will try to track this one down in camp. Suarez will come home. Jeanette doubles in a run. And it's 6 to 2. No good swing. Jeanette. Hitting 308 against left handers. And Cespedes right now, I think, with with he's compromised with his hip, and his initial reaction is I can catch this ball. And he did a straight bead line for it. Two in a row, basically the same, and did not get it because of the quad. And then he just pulled up once he realized that he wasn't going to get there. Now Adam Duvall will bat, but you're right, Keith. It just seems like he's not 100% running well, in the outfield right now. Well, he's not going to be 100%. Period. And it's maybe cost an out or two here in the fourth. Hard to say if he would have gotten to those if he was running at full speed. But Reds have back-to-back -back doubles, and now Duvall, who could desperately use a hit at the plate, High drive to the opposite field. This one will hang though. Conforto's got it. Jeanette goes to third. He beats the throw from Conforto. There's two outs. Boy, and Duvall did not. He ran the first base, and that was about it. You know, you've got a high fly ball like that. You got to get around, turn the first base. You know, give it a little something. 
I know you're eight and twenty six but it could be a very very long long year. If you start letting that seep in. Now Barnhart the batter might be a long year here anyway no. Well yeah. There's Paul Seawald getting ready in the Mets bullpen. For all the numbers about young pitchers their third time through an order. I think he might just go to the bullpen before it gets that far. Barnhart looping one inside the left field line. That's a fair ball. Jeanette scores. Barnhart's into second. Three doubles in this fourth inning have provided two runs for the Reds. They got a pinch hit here for Bailey. Off the end of the bat, the changeup didn't get it away enough, and Cespedes is getting a lot of work tonight out in left field. Chasing a lot of balls today. Homer Bailey's night is through. As Barnhart continues to beat up left handed pitching, it's Alex Blandino off the bench to hit in place of Bailey. Blandino's gotten a lot of playing time. We mentioned that Eugenio Suarez had a fractured thumb and missed. Couple of weeks. Jeanette had some shoulder issues. He was out for a few games. So Blandino's filled in around the diamond for the Reds, but really a utility guy at this point. As Conlin tries to get out of this fourth inning. Then it will be Seawall, maybe Kasselman, Lugo. We'll see a lot of the Mets bullpen tonight to try to hold this lead down. Conlin uh -oh. section opening at least for one more out here. I think my favorite's the guy with the Irish flag that he's wearing as a cape. There he is. It's like the Grandpa Bird version for Stephen Matz. Remember his debut? Ah. Uh. Any luck from anywhere right now would help the Conlin family. Now three and one on Blandino with Hamilton next. He homered his last time. Not a lot of pitches here, 55, but once major league hitters start to figure it out, it's tougher and tougher to put away. And that's why you saw Conlin really the first time through have no problem. But here, the second time through the order, it's gotten more difficult. And now he walks Blandino to bring up the tying run in Billy Hamilton. And Mickey Calloway will likely be. Pointing to the bullpen here. Seawalt's ready. And P.J. Conlin's major league debut has come to an end here tonight. He got the Mets through three innings, allowing just one hit. But here in the fourth, Cincinnati's tagged him for two runs, three hits so far, and two men on base. A big hand from the Conlin friends and family now. It will be the Mets bullpen to try to help P.J. Conlon get through the rest of this night. Call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon. Paul Seawald against Billy Hamilton when we come back.
Maybe not quite as good as the guy he was just talking to, Stephen Matz, who beat the Reds in his first big league start. But Conlon got 11 outs. Now Paul Seawald will try to help him out of this fourth inning. There's Paul's numbers. Trying to see when the last time he was in the ball game. He put three innings, gave up three runs in that second game of the Braves series. Billy Hamilton batting left handed. Skies won to Conforto. And Seawall does get Conlin out of the fourth. The Mets keep their lead. The Red Strand, two close the book on P.J. Conlin in his big league debut. Racing back to the wall, Bourgeois. The Reds are National League Central Division champions. They have had some good nights here at Great American Ballpark, even in this decade. Jay Bruce with a walk off home run back to clinch the 2010. National League Central Division Championship for the Reds. They won it again in 2011. Those were two of the three winning seasons the Reds have had since 2001. Here's Jackson Stevens against Estrubal Cabrera to start the fifth. Those Reds were managed by Dusty Baker. They did not win a postseason series. Remember, they got up 2 0 on the Giants, and then it all fell apart. Homer Bailey was a part of that. Scott rolling error cost them a win late. That was a big fold in that in that postseason series. Stevens had a little bit of work last year, came up late. Seven appearances, four starts, 25 innings with a 4.68 ERA. Stevens owns two major league victories, one of them against the Mets last year. September 10th at City Field. He won his major league debut, struck out eight against the Cubs last July. That was as a starter. He's in the bullpen now. A full count on Cabrera, one of I mean, pretty much the only Met tonight who was unable to put the ball in play against Tomer Bailey. Two strikeouts, both pretty much on that same pitch, had Cabrera out in front. It's this one in the air. Billy Hamilton chases, lunges, and makes the catch on the run. Nice play by Hamilton. Four years in a row, he's been a gold glove finalist. 
And he can track down pretty much anything in the outfield. I did not think this ball was hit this well and it he had to run that down nice play. I hate to see those cyclone fences there you can get your spikes caught on those. That's what happened to Bobby Valentine. Shortened Bobby's career. Todd Frazier looks at a strike. Now Bobby was a really good prospect. Yes, he was. A lot of people don't realize that what a great player Bobby was. That career never turned out because of that injury you just mentioned. Bobby got around other ways. Major League Manager, of course. Candlestick Park, old Candlestick Park. Growing up as a kid with Mays and Bobby Bonds had Cyclone Fence all the way around. Mm -hmm. You got prize players like Willie Mays and Felipe Alou in right field in the old days. McCovey came up in left field, believe it or not. You want to keep those guys healthy. Full count on Frazier. Stevens has gone full with each of the first two hitters. And he has faced after Homer Bailey allowed six runs on eight hits. Bailey probably glad to not see Adrian Gonzalez anymore. Gonzalez homered for the seventh time in his career against Bailey. Frazier chases. That's something we haven't seen him do a whole lot as a Met. He did it a lot in this ballpark with the Reds, but not since he's gotten to the Mets. As Stevens gets the strikeout, we go to Steve Gelbs, whose report. Is brought to you by Volkswagen. Well, Wayne, at the top of this inning, we showed that Jay Bruce walk-off homer from 2010 to clinch the division. I spoke with Bruce about it before the game today. He calls it the best moment of his entire baseball career. Doesn't remember anything that happened immediately after. Said he blacked out until he rounded third base and then saw all of his guys waiting for him at home plate. And he said, looking back on it, the most rewarding thing is that he now knows he is forever a part of Cincinnati Reds history. That moment is forever a part of Cincinnati Reds history. And every time he comes back to Cincinnati, he says there are always people waiting with pictures for him to sign of that moment in particular. Steve, thank you very much. Jay Bruce, during his time with the Reds, was their leader in games played, home runs, RBIs, extra base hits, even triples. He was a stalwart for the Cincinnati club in the early part of this decade. As Adrian Gonzalez hits another booming shot. Two home runs tonight for Adrian Gonzalez. Told you the last time Gonzalez played here, he had three home runs and drove in eight in one game. Slider. Oh boy. Here in it. Here hit me. Not too hard. It hurts. Well done, Adrian. Starting to come back together again now. Jose Lobatone ahead in the count. He doubled his first time. The Mets have hit four home runs tonight. Gonzalez has two of them. Bruce and Conforto, the other two. Pretty much everybody we talked about that Keith you said needed to get going and hit some homers. Well, they've done it tonight. Well, it's a club built on home runs on the long ball, and they're getting it tonight. This is a perfect park. I mean, if you're going to be a general manager here, I mean, I I would have to build a club with a bunch of power hitters here because this is just a hitter's delight. 
Jose Lobatone hits one deep the other way, but Duvall able to get to it on the warning track. And the side retired. Adrian Gonzalez's last multi home run game was here in Cincinnati. He's added another one tonight. The Mets lead by four. Rangers and Mariners expressed some interest on Mets blog presented by City featured on SNY TV. We heard some rumblings earlier about a couple other teams Keith that might be hot on Matt Harvey's trail. I'm not surprised but in the least first pitch swinging Jesse Winker flies out to Jay Bruce. I would. As for tonight's starters, PJ Conlon got the Mets into the fourth inning, gave up one run, one hit the first three, and then unraveled a bit in the fourth. It was never a good night from Homer Bailey, literally, from the first batter he faced tonight. Michael Conforto hit a home run, and Bailey never recovered. As tonight's starters brought to you by People's United Bank. I would think maybe the Giants would have an interest in uh, Matt Harvey with Cueto going down on the DL, be gone out for six weeks. Maybe more. The Rangers GM John Daniels said they won't trade for Harvey. That if there is any interest, they'll pick him up if he doesn't get traded, in which case the Mets would release Harvey. <coughs> so we'll see. Somebody's going to pick Matt up. He's going to get a second chance no, to no reinvent fault. himself. No, yes. Seawald backs for Raza. Seawald in his second inning. He's walking on air right now. Big time Vegas Golden Knights fan, a season ticket holder for the expansion team that has gone all the way to the Western Conference Final in hockey. Peraza with a line drive. Conforto a late start has to dive and make the catch. I just hate what's going on right now as far as this challenges uh, right away every, everything is questioned put your hand up automatic if you're the manager and then go look at the video OK he caught it no we're not going to that's that's baloney. <laughs> not on your lawn here Emma. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wayne. Nice catch by the way by Mr. Conforto. Would you rather they don't get the calls right? Well, 
it's it's just it's just to me they want to speed up the game and uh, you know it, you're gonna hold. Let's make sure. <laughs> it does walk in the face of the <laughs> pace of play and how they want to make the games quicker. That definitely doesn't do it. Joey Votto pushes one foul. Man at himself. Joey's Joey's very uh, intense, intense player. He simmers. There's his back of his baseball card. Oh, John Maine hit his first home run. How about that? That was at City Field. Oh, they're at Shea going back then. 2007. It's a one hopper right back to Seawald here. Joey Votto hitless tonight. And Paul Seawald has a one, two, three bottom of the fifth. Mets still lead by four. Pinella. Seven three Mets. Paul Seawald will bat for himself here in the sixth. And we mentioned Seawald in his last appearance, three innings. He's been a multi innings eater for the Mets so far. Already an inning in the third tonight as Stevens pours in a strike. Seawald has gotten at least four outs in four of his last five appearances. Three innings against the Brewers on April 14th. Three innings against the Braves earlier in the week. Puts this ball into play as Jose Peraza takes care of Seawald. And there's one out as we go to Doug Williams in the studio for a game break brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Phillies coming off a tough loss yesterday against the Nationals. Doug, thank you very much. As Ahmed Rosario bats. RBI on a sack fly for Rosario in the second. He doubled in the fourth inning. Probably would have had more than a double if it wasn't for P.J. Conlin on base in front of him in that fourth inning. Doubled off the wall. The ball bounced away from Hamilton, but Rosario could only get to second. That's hit hard. It's fair down the third baseline. 
Ahmed Rosario bidding for his second extra base hit of the night. He's got two doubles. And the Mets have a man in scoring position once again. The Mets have scored in every inning, threatening again. Right down the line on it. I believe it was a hanging breaker. Multitasking by the third base umpire there, jumping out of the way and then calling and calling it fair at the same time. Very impressed with Ed Hitchcock. Hitchcock on Hitchcock. Hitchcock on, on that call. Well done. I always have a hard time pronouncing his name. It's unusual. Michael Conforto looks at a strike as we bring to you tonight's Verizon trivia question. The only Reds manager to win manager of the year. Ponder that. We'll Gosh. give you the answer soon. Gosh, you've got Sparky Anderson. You've got Dusty Baker. Lou Pinella managed Lou Pinella. the 1990 team. Yeah. They took him to the World Series. They swept Oakland. the Oakland A's. Yep. That was a stunner. Fred Hutchinson was the manager here for years when I was a kid growing up. Back in the days of Veda Pinson and Frank Robinson and Jim Maloney. Jim Maloney threw a couple of no hitters like tonight's starter as a sliding stop by Jeanette. But a throw that's too late to get Conforto. And now Rosario's at third base. The Mets threatening the score for a sixth straight inning tonight. Put runners on the corners as Conforto gets an infield hit. Well, Conforto's hit the ball on the ground tw uh, twice today. Hit a home run down the opposite field. He grounded out to shortstop. He has not hit the ball to right field, which I think is, is, is a sign of improvement and starting to get it back. Here's Cespedes, an RBI tonight, a double and a run scored. Infield shifted a bit to the left. Slow bouncer. Oh, he got Rosario's him. in between third and home. Breaking for the plate. He's in a rundown. Oh, my gosh. Look at this horrible rundown. And finally, it's Suarez who tags Rosario. Conforto ended up at third. Cespedes at first. So credit to Rosario for at least. Staying held up long enough so that Conforto could take an extra base. One five. Tie two five. That's one. Barnard kind of juggled it for a second. One five two five. And now Jay Bruce will bat Cespedes at first after the fielder's choice. Rosario kind of broke for the plate there. Well, I think it was a contact for him. You're up. Ball hit on the ground. Anything back to the pitcher, they're going to try to turn two. Problem for Rosario wasn't hit hard enough for Stevens to go to second, so he got Rosario caught up. Well, Jay Bruce with a two run homer tonight. Jeanette shifted into the outfield. Bruce, who of course played with the Reds for a long time, says he learned a lot from Joey Votto in his time here. No, he and Joey Votto were tight. Well, Bruce says he learned how to become an everyday player being around Joey. The way Joey went about his business, the way he prepared, the routine, the process, all that stuff. That's what Jay says he learned from Joey. I wonder what he would have thought of me and my pregame process. What would he have learned from you? Just get 15 minutes of ground balls, take throws from your teammates on the infield, take a good concentrate, concentrated BP session, and get in the clubhouse and relax. Get ready to play. Bruce out in front of that pitch. That sounds like a good pregame routine. Yeah, it's a long season. I, I don't know what 
what they do pre I know they come here very early and they, they go over the videotape. They do a lot of hitting and to me it's too much hitting. I, I wouldn't want to be in that cage like these guys get in the cage all day long. Havado kind of takes hitting to almost like this neurotic scientist level. Well I think everybody today they hit 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 hit. I mean even on days when we only used to hit in the cage when it was raining. There's a slider in the dirt right there taking it. Barnhart gold glove back there beautiful block. Tucker Barnhart's become one of the best defensive catchers in baseball. Blocking and throwing the whole thing. Only one error last season for the whole year. First Reds catcher to win a gold glove since Johnny Bench. Barnhart got one. Jason Hayward of the Cubs along with Inciarte and Ozuna in the outfield. Remember now they do left center and right for the outfield. They don't just give it to three outfielders anymore. That's how Ozuna I like that. pulled one out. Yeah. Instead of just three center fielders winning it, for example. Bruce takes ball four. The bases are loaded for Cabrera. Watch him get down, open up the glove, get down on the knees. That's why they got the protectors there and just smother the ball. I mean, that's the way you teach it to him. A kid if who was wanting to learn how to be a catcher that's it. That's the way it's supposed to look. Here's Cabrera with the bases loaded 0 for 3 tonight he struck out a couple of times. It's been great for the Mets with runners in scoring position this year it has been great period. One for two so far this year with the bases loaded. We looked earlier entering tonight's play you mentioned it to me that his splits righty lefty are identical. So he's been equally as good from both sides of the play which is not easy to do. Cabrera starting to chase so you know you can only stay hot for so long. Everybody gets in a slump. And Cabrera certainly has carried this team. And he's just starting to just chase bad pitches which means he's getting a least a little bit off. Can you feel it as a hitter when that that hot streak is about to end. No. Um, geez it's been so long it's one of the things you just can't explain uh, Wayne how you can go in a slump and when you come out of it um, obviously when you start going in, you start going into a slump you start feeling bad it's just not all of a sudden abracadabra snap your fingers and in that particular game you're, you're in a funk it's a gradual process where you're not feeling in sync at the plate and maybe sometimes we think too much and further it along quicker. Cabrera it's that one hard but Joey Votto handles the big hop. And the Mets leave the bases loaded in the sixth. This was the first inning tonight that they did not score. Johnny Bench, 10 gold gloves in his career. Tucker Barnhart, as we mentioned, the first Reds catcher to win one since him.
And Eugenio Suarez takes ball one to start the bottom of the sixth against Paul Seawall. Into his third inning of work. Helped P.J. Conlon out of the fourth inning. Conlon gave the Mets exactly what they wanted tonight. They didn't need Conlon to go out and give them six innings. They didn't need to be spectacular. Just keep them in the game. They gave them a nice lead. He held on to it long enough. Now the Mets bullpen can do the rest. Oh, I felt that they would love to have gotten five or six out of him. I'm sure they would have loved to have gotten a win. Yeah. Uh, where they got him set six runs when he when he left the game. He had a six to one lead going into that bottom of the fourth. That's that's like perfect world stuff though yeah, for a realistic expectation. I'm, I'm sure uh, Conlon is disappointed. Suarez reaches out taps this one toward the corner and homers. Got it over the wall a straight line drive down the left field line. A Eugenio Suarez hit 26 home runs a year ago. That's his fifth already this season. He's got 21 RBIs playing in just 19 games this year. Oh, hanging slider. So we got a. It doesn't seem like a ball game, but it's a three run game, and this has become a game here. And leads can go away fast here. Only the second homer allowed by Seawall this year. He doesn't give up many. Now, Scooter Jeanette fouls one off deep toward the left field corner. Take a look at the Mets road ahead. Keith will be with me here in Cincinnati. Gary is back with Ron Darling on Fridays. The Mets and Phillies will play then. Oh, look, I got some off time coming. You do. Yeah. <laughs> nice week and a half week. before the Diamondbacks at City Field next yeah. weekend. What I'll a start be, for them. I'll be doing a lot of my book stuff there. That's why uh, Mr. Gowdy, our, our, uh, my, uh, our boss at SNY, uh, gave me the time off so I can. I got a lot of book promotion going on there starting the 13th. I'm Keith Hernandez. Available everywhere. What next week, May 15th? May 15th is when it comes out, and I've got a whole slate of the rounds to make. Seawald fields his position and beats Jeanette to the bag. Not too many times you see a one unassisted, but that was really the only play Seawald had. Almost stumbled, but recovered. He's there laughing about it right there. <laughs> Adam Duvall at the plate now it looks like Dave Island is going to pay a visit to Seawall. Make sure. Robert Gesellman is up in the Mets bullpen. Want to make sure he's all right there. He stumbled a little bit. Also, I think they want to get Gazelman up and throwing. See Seawald again, take that right there. He recovered nicely. So Dave Island giving Seawald a moment to catch his breath at least. Watch his glove and his head here. That they pretty much stay still. And he's got very con good control, no bobbing and weaving, and that's one of the big reasons why. Nice. Got a very simple motion, not very simplistic. You see a lot of uh, very, very compact uh, wind ups in today's pitchers. Seawalt only two walks this year, 20 strikeouts. The ball gets a base hit. He was one for his last 17. And he's on with one out. Now Barnhart will bat left handed for the first time tonight. This is his weaker side. As Jared Hughes, the veteran, gets loose in the Reds bullpen.
Frazier playing way off the line at third. Middle infield stays tight, hoping for that ground ball. Mets haven't turned a lot of double plays this year, but this is a good candidate for two. Mets are at the bottom of the National League as far as double plays turn. Scott Shebler on deck. He'll bat in the pitcher spot. Only the Yankees have turned fewer double plays than the Mets in the majors. They're going, it's double your pleasure. <laughs> They're going pretty good. Wow. Yankees Red Sox play this week. I believe they start tomorrow. 15 out of 16 for the Yankees. Glaber Torres with the walk off home run yesterday. You know that during this run the Yankees have had they played they haven't played slouches they've played the Angels the Astros the Indians now they got the Red Sox coming up. Well, they've beaten good teams. They still haven't caught the Red Sox Boston a game ahead for now. Red Sox still riding their 17 and 2 start. Barnhart breaks his bat floats one foul. American League East turning into a pretty good division at the top. The Blue Jays have gotten off to a good start. Curtis Granderson has swung the bat well. We'll see Curtis next week at City Field when the Blue Jays are in town for a two game series. Minnesota had a good year last year. They've been struggling. They're under 500, but they're only two back behind Cleveland at 500 on top at Central. Kind of wallowing there. Detroit five games under, only two and a half back. The Angels have hung with the Astros so far in the AL West. Those two teams tied for first. Houston has gotten an incredible start from Garrett Cole. Really from all their starters. Verlander's been terrific again. But Garrett Cole has gone there and has quickly turn things around after a down 2017 with Pittsburgh. Verlander lost his first game as an Astro starting from last year when they picked him up for that stretch run. Barnhart with a base hit. Duvall touches up at second he'll go to third and the Reds brewing here in the sixth. That's going to be all for Seawall. We're going to go to Gazelman. Getting a little hairy for the Mets. Three run lead, but the Reds have the tying run at the plate. And Robert Gazelman enters to face Scott Shebler when we return.
Hats off for heroes, because no matter where you serve or when you served, we stand ready to serve all military families. Well, there's Robert. Last time he pitched, he gave up a run, that second run in that 2 0 loss on Saturday to the Rockies. Facing Scott Shevler, he backs him off. It was the outing against the Braves on Tuesday when Gesellman allowed four runs, including a couple of homers. Before that, he had not allowed a hit to a left handed batter all year. 0 for 20. And then he gave up four hits to left handed batters in that game. Two and oh on Shebler. Shebler actually better against left handed pitchers than righties as we see Barnhart. Almost in a catcher's crouch with his lead at first. Shebler hits a strike to Cespedes. Tagging from third is Duvall. Cespedes' throw not in time. A run closer for the Reds. An RBI for Shebler off the bench. And it's 7 to 5. Well, that was big trouble if that found a gap. Now Hamilton will bat home run tonight for Hamilton a fly to center. It's kind of exactly the opposite of what they really want deep down for Billy Hamilton the offensive player. They want him to use his speed. Instead, he's hit a ball over the fence and left and another high fly to center tonight. His home run was from the right side against P.J. Conlon. Batting lefty it's another fly ball lazy fly for Conforto. If Hamilton does that he's going to be out a lot of the time. Including twice in this game. Robert Gesellman helps the Mets out of the inning. The lead shrinks to two. Gonzalez has hit two home runs tonight. He's three for three. Michael Conforto's gone deep with a couple of hits. Jay Bruce, a homer as well. Mets have 11 hits. The offense has certainly been awake tonight. As Jared Hughes takes the mound for the Reds. Well, here's someone that's having a good a good year so far. Look at the walks, outstanding. The strikeouts, innings pitched. Oh, got a good sinker, doesn't he?
Todd Frazier 0 for 3 tonight. Just a breaking ball from Hughes who has bounced around the National League Central. Started as a pirate. Handful of years for Pittsburgh Milwaukee last year and now a two year deal with the Reds. Getting the, getting the old Midwest tour Keith. Well he's also got a pretty good sinker but uh, the fact that he's bounced around. Probably a sign of a lot of inconsistency. Got Frazier to chase again. We have not seen Frazier really expand his zone like he has tonight. He strikes out for the second time. So take a look at the Jeep pitch cast. Well, here's all the home runs, and their pitches are basically, if you notice, up or over the middle. Their inner half, the breaking ball hanging, fastball right down the Broadway, hanging slider. <laughs> and you know what? That's what happens. You get. Ask the umpire for a new ball and you start rubbing up a new one. <laughs> well, Gonzalez has deposited a couple into the red seats here at Great American Ballpark tonight. His first multi homer game since August of 2016, which was also here at Great American Ballpark. He had three that night. Talked earlier about Gonzalez launching home runs off of Homer Bailey. He's hit one off of Hughes in his career, too. Swing and a miss. Gonzalez's perfect night is over. Retired for the first time. As we send it back to the studio for another game break with Doug Williams. Doug, thank you very much. Odubel Herrera has been on base now in 31 consecutive games. That's the longest streak in the majors. Second on that list is Jesse Winker, although Winker is 0 for 3 tonight, the Reds' right fielder. Jose Lobatone is 1 for 3, doubled in his first at bat. Hmm. Got to make that play off the tarp. <laughs> a left hander down there. Yeah, it was on his glove side. He said it was spinning too much, yeah, but sidewinder. Uh, it doesn't work for me. Blevins getting ready. Usually when we see Blevins, we see AJ Ramos right behind him. That's asking for a lot of outs from their bullpen tonight. Interesting to me that Kesselman is in the on deck circle right now. See if he actually bats should Lobatone reach. We'll never know. Scooter Jeanette throws out Lobatone. And a 1 2 3 inning for Jared Hughes. Stretch time in Cincinnati. Those kids already beat us to it.
saca batazo elevado, fuerte por la parte izquierda, va atrás, bien atrás, lleva color, lleva sabor, hasta la vista baby, cuadrangular de Bartolo, Bartolo Colón, por el juego, 4 a 0, la sacó. The Spanish radio call of Bartolo Colon's home run two years ago today. You didn't I th think we'd let May 7th go by without seeing that? I almost thought it was Arnold Schwarzenegger in the call. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think Arnold got it from listening to Mets Spanish radio? <laughs> Here's Jesse Winker. He's. Been on base in 21 straight games, but not yet tonight. No, oh. won't get on this time safely either. Gonzalez to Gaselman. One down. There's Blevins and there's Ramos. They have pitched in the same inning 11 times already this year. That's in 17 appearances for Blevins and 18 for Ramos. 11 of them have come in the same inning. Well, they've been kind of the tandem because, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Blevins is a left handed specialist. Arrazo 0 for 3 tonight. Rosario trying to make him 0 for 4. Close play. Wow. Arrazo's out. Very close. Raza got down that line pretty good. And Rosario charged this ball as well as he could and got rid of it. It's a boom boom play. And they got him. Two quick outs for Gaselman. And now Joey Votto will bat. None of the Reds' top three hitters in their order have a hit tonight. Combined 0 for 10. Votto's the only one who's been on base. He walked in the first. See the story earlier in the week about Votto, Keith, when he was telling St. Louis Uber drivers that he beat Albert Pujols for the MVP several years ago. He was bragging to the taxi drivers that are yeah. trying to get to know who he is. And Joey was. They were asking him what team he plays for, and he said Cincinnati Reds. They said, "Where's that?" He said, "In Ohio." Where's that? <laughs> then they asked him if he was playing the Cardinals, and he said yes. And in fact, in 2010, I beat Albert Pujols for the National League MVP award. Win an MVP, you got to feel pretty good, right? I mean, well, sure. you've got one. Yes, I do. Feels just as good that I shared it, too. You don't go around Pittsburgh telling people you shared it with Willie Stark. No, I don't. Actually, it was two Bay Area, Bay Area kids that won the MVP that year in the National League. Willie's from Oakland, across the bay. And I, he represented the East Bay, and I represented the West Bay of San Francisco. Conforto moving over to his right. Tracked down the line drive off the bat of Votto. And Robert Gesellman gives the Mets a much needed 1 2 3 inning.
Orlando Resort's three amazing theme parks, including Universal's Volcano Bay Water Theme Park, a tropical paradise like no other. Plus, stay on site at Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort. Just go to sny.tv slash Toyota and enter today. Robert Gesellman bats for himself to start the eighth. He has faced five batters. He's retired all five. Interesting to see the Mets. Yeah, two run game, not opting with a pinch hitter and going to the bullpen. Nicky Callaway hoping to extend Gesellman at least one more inning, it looks like. Nobody up in the bullpen right now. Trying to bridge it to Familia. Been a while since Familia's had a save. Selman goes down looking. The two run lead, you could pinch hit a Nemo or Reyes to lead off an inning. Uh, you know, try to get some insurance runs. This is not like it's a seven run game. Selman will get ready for the bottom of the eighth. Here's Rosario with two doubles tonight. Just his second multi extra base hit game of the year. In fact, the Mets have a season high with their eight extra base hits in this game. Four homers, four doubles. Hughes has come in. He's been a strike throwing machine. Rosario strikes out. Jared Hughes has fanned four of the five batters that he's faced. Rosario, I don't know what he was thinking there. Didn't realize the ball got away from Barnhart, although briefly. Two up, two down. As we give you the answer to our Verizon trivia question, the only Reds manager to win Manager of the Year is Jack oh, McKeon. Wow. 1999, a Reds team that made it to the National League Wild Card game. And lost Big to the Jack. New York Mets. Trader Jack. That's right. Jack told me when he was managing the Marlins that when Whitey was shopping me around in 83, uh, he was with the Padres. He was general manager for the Padres there. And he really tried hard to get me. And I guess it didn't work out. I was almost traded to the Astros for Ray Knight. How about that? Wow, I did not know that. It was very close. Almost happened. Would have changed the course of things. And Fordo gets under this one. Winker waits for it to drop and retire the sign. Jared Hughes has put together back to back one, two, three innings as we head to the bottom of the eighth.
Hey, Eugenio Suarez has a home run and a double tonight. Swings through that breaking ball that stayed up from Gazelman. Mickey Callaway asking another inning of Gazelman. He wants him to carry, be the bridge to Familia. Gazelman looking very sharp tonight. Inning and two thirds so far. He's throwing strikes. That's really all Mickey Callaway wants at the end of the day, isn't it? Levins and Ramos getting ready if Kasselman needs help. Scooter Jeanette follows. Suarez, former Tigers prospect, was traded for Alfredo Simon after the 2014 season. He's turned into quite a player for these Reds. Guy doesn't get a lot of publicity. Votto gets it all here in Cincinnati. Big shift on the left side of the infield. Suarez tries to dump one to right. Bruce comes on, makes the catch. Tonight's drive around the majors presented by Cadillac. Javier Baez leads the National League in RBIs. He's helped the Cubs get a lead tonight. Odubel Herrera having another solid night at the plate. He's homered a couple of times. As the Phillies have punched away at Jeff Samarja and the Giants. Steven Strasburg back in his hometown tonight as the Nationals take on the Padres. Cardinals had a big three game sweep of the Cubs in St. Louis. All three come from behind victories. Jeanette with a high drive to left. Cespedes is back, looks up, and it's gone. Scooter Jeanette to the opposite field. And suddenly, a one run game in Cincinnati. A 7 3 Mets lead has become 7 6. Sixth home run in this game. Opposite field. Boy, oh boy, what a ballpark. To, what a ballpark to hit him. Just the sixth hit allowed to a lefty by Gaselman this year. They've all come this week. Well, here's the swing. And it's just going the other way on a pitch up in the strike zone, a little below the belt. Don't have to overswing in this park. You got to be careful with Duvall. Broken bat roller. Frazier charges. Nice. And he gets Duvall by a step. That would have ended up in the crowd if it weren't for the screen above the dugout nowadays. But a nice play by Frazier after that. Miss sawed him off. Oh boy. See him bring his hands in. No way. That ball's a, almost a foot inside. Here's Tucker Barnard, two hits and RBI double tonight. Each team has busted out offensively as Rysel Iglesias throws in the Reds bullpen. He's their closer and he's a tough customer. Right to Gonzalez. And the inning is over, but Robert Gesellman. Allows a home run to Scooter Jeanette. And we go to the ninth in a one run game.
Marcel Herrera, new pitcher, Rysel Iglesias. Like Myers in a strike to Cespedes. Uh, Iglesias, their closer. You can see the impressive numbers from Cuba. Right handers just one for 22. And make that now two for 23. Cespedes punches one into the corner. The Mets have their ninth extra base hit of the night. The second double for Cespedes. Iglesias Keith known for that slider he spun that one right in the zone. He well he got it away but it was just flat not really a good breaking ball and Jose Reyes is going to come in and pinch run for Cespedes the correct move. It's a two run ball game here or a one run ball game. It's a big run out there you don't want to take any more chances with Cespedes. You surprised it's not Lagares just to go in defensively. It seems like Jose has not been called upon to pinch hit lately has he. That is true. Reyes has been doing some pinch running whenever the call has risen for him. Yesterday for Flores in the ninth inning. Now for Cespedes in the ninth. Jay Bruce with a base hit. Reyes gets to third. He'll be given the stop sign. No reason to run with nobody out. Glenn Sherlock held it up. Reyes didn't get a great book off of second. Bruce seemed kind of surprised there at first that Reyes didn't score. Yes. Ball wasn't hit that hard. Off the end of the bat. A little bit. And down the line. I mean, you got I got a score on that ball unless he felt the first baseman was going to catch that ball. Either that or extremely safety first. Now Cabrera is 0 for 4 tonight. Take another peek here from this. Look, look at Glenn Sherlock at the bottom of your screen. Let's see if he holds him up. He held him up, not emphatically. Bruce, it looked like he mouthed to Ruben Amaro. Oh, he didn't go? I kind of want that RBI. Mets could use an insurance run. Reds have been clawing back for the last few innings. The only soft spots in the Mets order tonight have been four and five. Cabrera and Frazier are combined 0 for 8 with four strikeouts. Gary's Familia hasn't had a save in nearly two weeks. He's getting hot in the Mets bullpen. Tomorrow night, game two of this series, Jason Vargas will get the start for the Mets. It'll be his third start of the year against the Reds' Luis Castillo. We'll get it going at 6.30 on SNY tomorrow. On Wednesday a day game Zach Wheeler against Sal Romano. Castillo really supposed to be the Reds ace. He's had a tough start to the year. Well, you've called it tonight with Cabrera Keith just not quite where he was. You know it's. He's done a great job. He's been hotter than a firecracker for a very long time. It's hard to maintain. Just starting to. He's a very disciplined hitter. He's just starting to chase a little bit. Strikes out for the third time tonight. And a big first out for Iglesias. Well, we have not seen Cabrera out in front of these changeups and breaking balls in the dirt like this for a very long time. So he'll get it back. Now Todd Frazier, he struggled tonight in his return to Cincinnati. 0 for 4. He's fanned his last two trips to the play, and he's a double play target.
Frazier has grounded into two double plays this year. And could be another here. Jeanette to second for one. Peraza to first for two. Rysel Iglesias gets out of the inning. Maybe the Mets should have scored on Jay Bruce's hit. Jose Reyes was given the stop sign, and it's still a one run game. And why control room is pretty calm now, but all the magic is gonna happen. Guy goes sports night at 11 o'clock. See you there. Michael Conforto shifts over to left field with Cespedes out of the game. Juan Lagares enters to play center. He'll bat in the pitcher's spot. And what was the pitcher's spot? Now Jerry's Familia takes the mound looking for the save, Keith. Yes, he has. Yes, he does. His ninth, it's tenth save. See his ERA is sparkling 1.69. Nasty. He's got to shut the door here. This is a, a game you do not want to let get away. Familia's last save was April 24th against the Cardinals almost two weeks ago. This is a pinch hitter. Ro Rosel, Rosel Herrera. Herrera. Came in as part of a defensive change in the top of the inning. Batting in what was the pitcher's spot. He's followed by Hamilton and Winker. What you don't want to see is Joey Votto. He's due up fifth. Herrera didn't bite. Former Colorado Rocky farmhand. Herrera was signed as a minor league free agent. Hasn't played a whole lot as Hamilton waits to bat next. Strike three called to Herrera and Jerry's Familia gets the first out. We go back to the top of the ninth inning. Should Jose Reyes have scored on this base hit from Jay Bruce? Well, the rule of a third base coach, and Reyes had to stop because he wasn't sure Vada was going to catch that line drive. If he touches third base 
when the outfielder fields the ball. He was a step short of it. So maybe that was the right call. That was probably the right call. That is the rule though. When someone touches the bag was the right fielder fields the ball or any outfielder depending if it's you know, normal depth depending on the depth of course you send them. And there was nobody out in that situation. You had Cabrera and Frazier coming up. They yep. both have had tough nights. Absolutely. Tonight. Kelly Hamilton one for three with a homer tonight. Oh he's got a good sinker tonight Familia. Probably pretty well rested. He's pitched a whole lot lately. His last appearance was Thursday against Atlanta didn't pitch at all in the Colorado series. Balls behind Hamilton cannot let this man reach base in this situation. A walk can turn into a double or even a triple. Chess and Y Mets games on the go on any device with live streaming presented by Verizon. Just visit SNY.tv or download the NBC Sports app today for live streaming coverage of every SNY Mets game. Jerry's Familia trying to put away the Reds and end this six game losing streak for the Mets. Another fly ball off the bat of Hamilton. Conforto's got it. Two up, two down. Fastest man in the majors has hit the ball in the air four times today. You would think that you would just be chop it down on the ground and fly. So now it's up to Winker and then Peraza. We're going to see Votto here in the bottom of the ninth. Seven home runs in this game. Big tiny ball. Oh, I shouldn't say big tiny. That's a paradox there. Sorry, folks. Small park. Mets with a season high nine extra base hits in this game. Last victory for the team was eight days ago, that 14 to 2. Blow out over the Padres. Zero and six homestand. They're worse since 2012. Put the bats awake here in Cincinnati, and the Mets now just need one more out to get back in the win column. Two and one on Winker. Pitcher in line for the victory, we're being told, is going to be Robert Kesselman, even though it was Seawald who came out of the bullpen first in relief of P.J. Conlin in his major league debut. Seawald gave up a couple of runs in an inning and two thirds. It is the scorekeeper's discretion. And I think that it's the right call. Scorekeeper unsatisfied by Seawald's work tonight, so Kesselman in line for the win if Familia can close it. And he's one strike away from doing so. All the Mets fans, the Conlin crew among them. Not a big crowd tonight, but a lot of Mets fans here in Cincinnati cheering on Jerry's Familia for the final out. And the Mets win. 
Familia works a perfect one two three bottom of the ninth. And for the first time in eight days the Mets get a victory they snap a six game losing streak. The pitching does just enough tonight. And Keith the offense did a whole lot. They sure did. Here's the last pitch the sinker chasing it in the dirt. And there's the end. There is a reaction. They're happy. Ireland singing when Irish eyes are smiling. Big win for the Mets. They, they drop. Put an end to the six game losing streak. There's your deciding home run right there. Big night for Adrian. Two home runs, four and five. The Mets, who haven't been homering, hit four home runs in today's game. Tonight's game summary presented by Mattress Firm. Seven runs on 13.